Hello everybody, my name is Zool, and welcome to my guide for Fallout 3 with Mod Organizer. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at user interface mods. That's right, after two episodes, we are finally going to be installing some mods. Speaking of those two episodes, episode one deals with an introduction, gets you all caught up with all the tools we're going to be using, and has a couple of any tweaks that are essential, as well as covering FOSE. Episode two is all about stability and performance improving, which we want to do before we get our game going with a bunch of mods. So go watch those two videos first, and then come back and watch this video. It's fine. You can pause the video, I can wait. Okay, moving on. The first mod that we're going to install is UIO, or User Interface Organizer. Uh, now, some guides may have you install this later on, kind of at the end after installing a bunch of other mods, but there is a desired effect from installing User Interface Organizer first, especially since we're going to be using Darnified UI. In the most basic terms, User Interface Organizer uses pagan magic to get all of your user interface mods to work together. Gopher did a really good video explaining how, using ancient pagan rites, this is achieved. And we don't really need to know anything more than that, let's just get to downloading and installing the mod. Head over to the link in the description, go over to the file section, and click download with manager. Once this tool is downloaded, just go ahead to the downloads tab in your mod organizer, double click on it, and it will begin to run an external installer. You don't need to worry about this, this is perfectly fine. Once that's done, UIO has been installed, and that's about it. Now, there's one thing I should mention about this. Once we install all of our user interface mods and run the game, UIO is going to leave some files in the override directory, and this is perfectly okay. The override directory loads last, and this is going to enable the user interface to be merged together after every single plugin has been loaded. Now, if you're uncomfortable with having things left in your override directory, there is a way to fix this to get them out of here, but we're not going to be covering it in this episode because we're actually going to be attaching these override files to the FWE Darnified UI patch. I thought I'd mention it though since some people will see something going on in their override and they'll freak out and delete them between the videos. Don't do that, these are very necessary files. Anyway, moving on to the next mod. The next mod that we're going to install is Darnified UI. Once again, there's going to be some guides that tell you not to install this mod when we do, but I recommend installing it right after UIO. Now, there's two versions of this mod, a faux mod and a 7-zip archive. We want the 7-zip archive, which a lot of guides you'll see on the internet, especially those using Nexus Mod Manager, aren't going to recommend. Because of this, the link in the description is going to be a direct download from this page, bypassing the main download page, so when you click on it, it'll just begin downloading the correct file. So don't really worry about looking for the exact download link. Now, another thing to note is that we're not going to need the hotfix, which some other guides will recommend, because we are going to be getting the functionality of the hotfix later on when we install FWE. So keep in mind that this user interface isn't going to be completely full until we've installed FWE, which is happening in the next episode. Uh, once this is downloaded, you can drag it to your desktop, and then clicking on this little wrench thing here, Click install mod and then type in D because we're looking for Darnified UI. Once we've selected that, click open. And it's going to ask you if you want to install Darnified UI. Click manual. As we can see, everything here should be good, so click OK. After that, check it off and the mod is installed. If you followed the series so far, your plugins tab should look a little something like this. Please note that UIO does not have its own plugin because it doesn't come with an ESP, so keep that in mind. Okay, so far we've installed Darnified UI, which makes our heads up display a lot smaller and suit a PC screen that's a few feet in front of your face much better than a TV screen that's a lot further away which the original user interface was designed for. However, it's still not very immersive. And that's where Immersive HUD comes in, surprisingly enough. This mod allows your user interface to fade into the background, giving you a much more scenic view of the screen. That is until you hover over something contextually and the user interface magically appears again. This mod is dead simple to install, just click download with manager. Make sure you have UIO and FOSE though, but if you follow this guide, shouldn't be a problem. Since we're going to be downloading FWE later on in this series, I'd also recommend that you pick up the Immersive HUD Darnified FWE patch. This mod is a dead simple download with manager. Straight simple. Don't install it yet though, because we're going to have to have FWE. However, if you're following this guide in order, we're going to talk about getting this going 
in the next episode. While we're on the topic of awesome user interface mods, Adjustable HUD. This is another mod by Gopher that allows you to adjust your user interface. So not only is it going to be more immersive, smaller, more suiting to your monitor, and a little bit customized, but you're also going to be able to move things around. In particular, I like to move the compass up to where it is in Skyrim. So just download the Darnified version of this with Manager and you're good to go. That's pretty much it. It does say you require the hotfix for Darn UI, but again, don't worry about that. We're going to deal with that in the next episode when we get FWE. Once all three of those files have been downloaded, head over to your Downloads tab. Remember that the FWE patch is not going to be activated quite yet. First, activate iHUD. This is a very simple mod to install, just click Manual just in case, and then click OK and the mod will be installed. Then install Adjustable HUD with the same method. And that's that, those mods are now installed. Alright, now this next mod is technically optional. It's the dynamic crosshair, and it basically causes your crosshair to get bigger or smaller depending on if you're crouched, if you're moving, that kind of thing. A dynamic crosshair is a very basic thing in an FPS, and we're going to install a mod that gives you a dynamic crosshair. If you don't want to install this mod, skip this part of the video, but I would really recommend watching the whole thing just in case something interesting comes up and you miss it. If you're going to install the mod, click on the file section on the download page, and then download the dynamic crosshair darnified UI version with Manager. Now, in order for the dynamic crosshair to work properly, you're going to need another crosshair mod for textures. In this case, we're going to be using smaller crosshair. From here, there are three versions of the mod. Classic, single pixel, larger dot, or regular dot. Choose whatever version you like, there's screenshots on the mods page, and then download that with Manager. Once these are downloaded, head over to the downloads section and look for the new files that have been downloaded, then just give them the old double click. First we're going to install the dynamic crosshair, clicking OK, then we're going to install small crosshair, setting this as the data directory, and then clicking OK. At this point, I would recommend that you run Loot. Now, if you're not familiar with Loot, we're going to be covering it in a separate video, which I'll link in the description. At this point, it's probably a good time to load up a brand new game of Fallout 3 and see if everything's working. I've done such a test myself, and it's actually what you saw at the beginning of this video. Anyways, that's about it for this UI video. Stay tuned for the next episode in the series where we're going to be installing some of our big, feature-friendly mods. Yeah! Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I have been Zool, and I hope that you have an excellent day. Oh, and subscribe and check out all my stuff and all that other branding nonsense that I always do. Bye!